Ah, you doing okay? Good, buddy. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Call a suppressor, not a silencer. Your ears would be ringing so loud. It's like, oh, <laughs> go, oh. A lot of things that get wrong. It's crazy out there, man. The power just went out. Everybody starts talking. We're trying to film a video. So the thing is, I was watching Altered Carbon last night, first episode, and the dude takes cover behind his kitchen cabinets while guys fire high-powered rifles at him. It's like, man, those are some bulletproof cabinets. And it got me thinking about all the things that Hollywood gets wrong with guns. They get it wrong so many times. And, sorry. We filmed a lot of videos with guns. We filmed videos with airsoft guns, a series with blank firing guns, that's Battlefield Rush. And we've gone out and we've shot real guns a whole bunch. We've run the whole gamut from crappy, fake, plastic guns to the real deal and everything in between. We've gotten some things right, we've gotten some things wrong, but I wanna make a video ranting about Hollywood because that's a lot of fun to do. Understanding the things that Hollywood gets wrong about guns comes down to understanding the mechanics of how they actually work, the physics of how the bullets fly and how the gun actually functions with like expanding gases and pieces of metal and all that kind of stuff. When you shoot a gun, it recoils, right? It kicks back. It's not because the slide moves back. It's not because of the expanding gases. That's because of Newton's law of physics. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. If you take a little piece of metal and you accelerate it to like Mach 1 or Mach 2, or I don't know how fast this particular imaginary gun is shooting its bullet, let's just say Mach 2. <laughs> you accelerate it to Mach 2. Well, that's a lot of force kicking back in the other direction, and that's really what's causing your gun to kick up. And you can see the difference. If you watch somebody shooting a pistol at a pistol range, you'll see how much it kicks versus how much a pistol kicks in a movie where they're using blanks, for example, in The Matrix. When he's firing two machine guns, one-handed, and there's like tick, 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 tick. You're getting a little bit of kick from the expanding gases of the blanks, but not nearly as much kick as you get in real life. Those things are right up into the air if you try to shoot real bullets out of those. <laughs> but he is the one, so whatever. Uh, Sam has an interesting story, actually, about sound. If somebody's more than, say, like, 200 meters away from you and they shoot at you, you'll actually see the muzzle flash first. Then you'll hear the crack of the bullet flying by, because the bullet's traveling faster than the speed of sound. And then you hear the bang of the gun. So it's flash, crack, bang, like that. Really weird. No one ever mixes their sound like that. They always get it wrong. In fact, we have a scene at the end of Rush where there's a sniper taking shots at somebody. Sam had to go into the sound booth himself and do the sound himself. <laughs> Which actually, maybe we should go ask Sam about that experience real quick. I think it'd be really fun. Tell me how that works and how movies get that wrong. Oh boy. I, okay, well first off, I still have issues with that scene. It was like super rushed when we filmed it. I know, rushed, ha. <sighs> it's, it's, it's littered with many issues, and so I'd say from a visual standpoint, it's not my finest work. But from an audio standpoint, I'd say it is. I actually did the sound design for that scene, as well as basically every other action scene in that series. Here's how that works. When you're doing sniper fire, basically you're taking that same concept of rolling thunder and applying it to sniper rifles. The bullet is traveling faster than the sound of the rifle. When you're approaching a sniper rifle scene where people are fighting with sniper rifles, people are not gonna shoot their guns a lot. You gotta approach it with a way beefens up your sound. You have to like make more with less, so to speak. A really good way to do that is to get really nerdy with the physics of firing a sniper rifle at great distances. The bullets generally travel much faster than the actual sound of the gunshot when heard or seen at a distance. So rather than just having a scene where the gun goes bang hit like that. You actually have a scene where it goes like this. Hit bang. So it's like the gun shoots silently in the distance. You see a muzzle flash in the distance. You see a stink. You see the thing get hit, and then suddenly you hear a like it's almost like rolling thunder. So now instead of just like one moment of gunfire, you're technically getting like three. You're getting the original gunshot, you're getting the bullet impact, incoming hit, whiz, ricochet, all that stuff. And then if you edit your scene right, you get to also have that of the gun firing in the distance as well. It kind of takes this one singular moment and kind of spreads it out into this huge meaty chunk. I think nerding out about this stuff makes the action more interesting because suddenly things don't work the way you're used to seeing them work. I guess the closer to realism you get, the further away you get from like the Hollywood approach. Hollywood approach kind of land at this point because it's so overdone. Necessity is probably the first thing in the sense that for the sake of certain scenes and narratives and storytelling, technical, physical aspects of 
firearms and action and nerding out, it's really not applicable. It doesn't really apply. It doesn't make the scene better. Mm, yeah. Sometimes you just want your hero to walk in and shoot everything and walk out unscathed because the point is, this guy's a hero, not here's how a gun works. Talking about suppressors? They get that wrong all the time. Call a suppressor, not a silencer, because there's nothing that silences the sound. To not only mitigate the muzzle flash, but to suppress the sound. John Wick 2, where they're walking like... <laughs> and there's people just walking as if they don't hear it. It's like, that would be so loud. Like yeah. Movies have always taught me that like suppressors were for stealth. But in reality, it's for your hearing. Yeah, it's so you can be in like an urban situation or inside, maybe without earplugs, and not completely decimate your ears or the other civilians that are around you. They're teammates, so they're walking by. So if you're shooting right next to a guy, you're gonna know, blow his eardrums out with a regular gun. Also, it calls into question, like in, in all shows and all like movies and stuff, when people are shooting guns without hearing protection, especially like cop shows, like. Your ears will be ringing so hard. Like you never see a movie where like an action hero is like before he goes in, he's like, <laughs> yeah. They should though. There's a lot of things that get wrong. One thing that I really like is, and, and they did in the Matrix too. It's like they'll slow down the action. They'll be, they'll be like, half of the shots are like real time. Other shots are like 30 frames a second, and then other shots are like 48. And they blend it perfectly together, so it actually feels like it's like whoa, I get to see like that little piece just a little slower because it's kind of fast, you know. Or like John Woo will like play the same shot three times from different angles. Like, I love, I love that. I think it like, it's such a cool pacing. A movie where somebody's like taking cover behind like a cabinet and it's like stopping all the bullets from hitting them. I, I, I think Die Hard 4 does that. Yeah, with like tables yeah. and stuff. Oh, we do. <laughs> But in the, like we did, we have been cardboard <laughs> in oh, tactical yeah, reloads. Yeah, exactly. Jake just opens fire and they're hiding behind cardboard with an AK. Just right? go 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 go. Reloading, dude. Yeah. That's like the worst. I think the worst thing in Hollywood movies. I, I mean, I don't really nitpick when it comes to this. I'm just enjoying the movie. But if I were to nitpick, they would shoot off like 16, 17 rounds. How is this guy still shooting without reloading? So everything wrong with guns in Hollywood. Racking the gun to mean you're, you're serious and you mean business. And the gun pointed at somebody and they rack the gun, either a bullet should pop out when that happens, or it just meant they're pointing an empty gun at the person until they racked it. Pulling the hammer back kind of makes sense though. That just makes it easier to pull the trigger. When you pull the hammer back, it generally means that your trigger pull is not as heavy. Loudness, guns are super loud. Even with suppressors, they're still loud. Jams never happen, reloading never happens, but I kind of get reloading. But John Wick 2 got that right. They got a lot of reloading in there. Crazy though, I feel like in today's like society with video games, like most people have a pretty good education as far as like how to use a firearm and like what firearms do. Wouldn't you say so? Yeah, but the, big, the biggest fault of video games, they, they teach you that reloading your gun, like, like let's say you have 100 bullets and I have a, a 30 round mag and I shoot five, so I got 25 left, reload. Now I've got 95 bullets, and what's really happening is you're throwing away those 25 bullets in that mag. Oh, yeah, unless you put <laughs> how, the, how the bullets just magically go into the yeah. other mag. That's why you should play Tarkov. Guns don't ever kick back in movies like they do in real life. Well, if you're using blanks, you only have the expanding gases of the blank to cause a kickback, which is a lot less than if you're actually moving a piece of mass in one direction, which causes the mass of the gun to move in the opposite direction. If you're using airsoft, then it's even weaker. Sparky, the, the gun guy on Rush, the gas, the expanding gas from the sniper rifles, especially coming out the side, like you need to make sure it's clear. You can't actually put a camera off to the side of the gun oh, because yeah. it'll break the lens. Yeah, people don't instantly die from getting shot unless, of course, they're shot in a very vital spot or you can get shot in the heart and you can still run for a block. Grandpa was actually in a bank robbery. Not the robbery, he was in the bank when it was robbed. And so the robber put everybody into the vault and then locked the vault and then you know grabbed his stuff and left. A cop was there and shot him and he shot him in the heart, the, the robber. And the guy ran for another two blocks before he dropped. Mm -hmm. Apparently my grandpa has a bullet, by the way. That's what my family's told me. Uh, bullet penetration. That wouldn't be a, a hassle, though, for like... Hmm. Bullet penetration? Yeah. That would be a pain. Yeah, if you had to like try to do real bullet penetration, your hero would never be able to take cover anywhere. You cannot hide behind a wooden table. You cannot hide behind cabinets. You cannot hide behind a, a car door. Thing. You cannot hide behind a car door. I mean, Drywall doesn't work either. Yeah, if you're shooting a 5.56 or, or a, what, 7.62? <laughs> dude, yeah. it will rip through those doors like... like Paper. They got right in the Matrix though when uh, Morpheus is running and the agent's shooting through the wall. That I love. Yeah. That was a cool sequence. That's a smart move. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Bullets don't penetrate water. They only penetrate like this far. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, whenever cool. he's like getting yeah, killed cool. in the water, you'd be totally fine. Movies where like, you know, the hero jumps into the water and they're like, da, 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 yeah, that's, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. So guys, if you're getting shot at, jump in the water. Go down a little bit, you'll be a-okay. <laughs> <laughs> Now if they have bow and arrow, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, just a quick reminder, we are judging the Light This Location Film Festival by Aperture. If you want to know more about it or take part in it, click the link in the description below. And yes, I am making a potato and turning it into a camera. Making a potato. <laughs> I'm carving a potato into a camera. I didn't make a potato. <laughs> <laughs>